In the summer of 1874, I was in Liverpool. And having finished my business, I felt that a long sea voyage would be agreeable. So instead of embarking on one of the many fine passenger steamers, I booked for New York on the sailing vessel Morrow. The Morrow was an English ship with little accommodation for passengers, of whom there were only myself, a young woman and her servant. It was from the latter that I learned that the young lady had been left with an English family by a man and his wife from South Carolina, both of whom had died on the same day at a house in Devonshire. A circumstance in itself sufficiently uncommon to remain rather distinctively in my memory. Even had it not transpired in conversation with the servant lady that the name of the man was William Jadett. The same as my own. I knew that a branch of my family had settled in South Carolina, but of them and their history I was ignorant. The moral set sail the 15th of June. The skipper favored us with very little of his company, except at his table. And the young woman, Miss Janet Harford, and I became very well acquainted. We were nearly always together, and I often tried to analyze and define the strange feeling which she inspired in me. A secret, subtle, but powerful attraction, which constantly impelled me to seek her out. But the attempt was hopeless. One evening, as we sat on deck, I asked if she could assist me in resolving my psychological frame of mind. For a moment, she was silent. And I began to fear that I had been extremely rude. And then she fixed her eyes gravely on my own. In an instant, my mind was dominated by as strange a force as ever entered human consciousness. It seemed as if she were looking at me not with, but through her eyes. From an immeasurable distance behind them. Ship, ocean, sky, all had vanished. I was conscious of nothing. And then from out of it, my former surroundings of deck and mast slowly resolved themselves. Miss Harford had closed her eyes and was leaning back in her chair, apparently asleep. The book she had been reading lay open in her lap. Impelled by some unknown motive, I glanced at the top of the page. It was a copy of that curious work, Denica's Meditations. And the lady's index finger rested on this passage. To many, it is given to be drawn away and to be apart from the body for a season. For a streams which flow across each other, the weaker is borne along by the stronger. So there will be certain kin whose paths intersecting their souls do bear company while their bodies go their own way, unknowing. Miss Harford arose, shuddering. The sun had sunk below the horizon, but it was not cold. There was not a breath of air, no clouds, not a star in the sky. A hurried tramping sounded on the deck. The captain summoned below joined the first officer who stood looking at the barometer. We are in trouble, I heard him exclaim. An hour later, the body of Janet Harvard, invisible in the darkness and the spray, was torn from my grasp by the cruel whirlpool of the sinking ship. And I fainted in the cordage of the floating mast to which I had lashed myself. amid the familiar surroundings of the stateroom of a steamer. 
On a couch opposite sat a man reading a book. I recognized the face of my friend Gordon Doyle, whom I had met in Liverpool on the day of my embarkation, when he was about to sail on the steamer City of Prague, on which he had urged me to accompany him. After some time, I spoke his name. Doyle, I said. Did they save her? He now looked at me and smiled as if amused. He evidently thought that I was half awake. Her? Well, who do you mean? He asked. Janet Harford, I replied. His amusement turned to amazement, and he stared at me, saying nothing. You will tell me after a while, I continued. What ship is this? Doyle stared again, and then replied, The city of Prague, bound from Liverpool to New York, three weeks out with a broken propeller shaft. Principal passenger, Mr. Gordon Doyle. One lunatic, Mr. William Jaddick. The two travelers embarked together, but they are about to part, it being my firm intention to pitch you overboard. I sat upright. Do you mean to say that for three weeks I have been a passenger on this vessel? Have I been ill? Yes, to the first question. And no, to the second, replied Doyle. Doyle, I cried. There is a mystery here. Please be serious. Wasn't I rescued from the wreck of the ship Morrow? Doyle changed color and approached me. What do you know of Janet Harford? He asked very calmly. First, tell me what you know of her, I said. Doyle gazed at me for a moment as if to think what to do, and then seated himself again on the couch. Why should I not know her, he said. I am engaged to marry Janet Harford, whom I met a year ago in London. Her family does not approve, and we eloped. Or are eloping, in fact. For on the day you and I boarded this steamer, she and her servant were boarding the ship Morrow. She would not consent to go in the same vessel with me, and it had been decided that she would take a sailing vessel in order to avoid detection. I am now afraid that this broken shaft may detain us so long that the Morrow will get to New York before we do, and the poor girl will not know where to go. By the way, she is only an adopted daughter of the Harfords. Her mother was killed by being thrown from a horse, and her father killed himself the same day. The Harfords adopted her, and she grew up believing that she was their daughter. I lay still in my berth. I hardly breathed. And finally I said, Doyle, what book are you reading? Oh, he replied. It's called Denica's Meditations. Janet gave it to me. She happened to have two copies. He tossed me the volume, which opened as it fell to a marked passage. To many, it is given to be drawn away and to be apart from the body for a season. For as streams which flow across each other, the weaker is borne along by the stronger. So there will be certain kin whose paths intersecting, their souls do bear company while their bodies go their own way, unknowing. She had, uh, she has, a singular taste in reading, I managed to say. Yes, she said. And now perhaps you will have the kindness to explain how you knew her name and that of the ship she sailed in. You talked of her in your sleep, I said. A week later, we were towed into the of New York but the motto was never heard from again.